95% of women normally experience painful menses in their reproductive age before they reach menopause that is occurring around 45 years of age. Some women do not understand what is going on, especially young ladies, especially teenagers, and this normally prevents them from doing their daily work, even going to school, because they are scared. Some experiencing menses for the first time do not understand what is going on into their system. If you are experiencing this as a young lady, know that now you are becoming a real woman who can conceive any time and bear a child. Under normal circumstances, is all your physiological function is very well. Now, in this scenario, we are going to look at definition of cramps, or painful menses or what we call dysmenorrhea we are going to tackle about causes of dysmenorrhea we are going to classify them we are going to do laboratory investigation and then manage them case by case of course we are going to look at home remedies that can help us to alleviate this kind of pain when a lady is attending her menses every circle stay tuned and if you have not subscribed to this channel hit this notification bell written subscribe for more videos that i will post pain that is caused by uterine contraction when a woman is attending her normal menses or normal menstruation period that it's between day one to day three and can go up to a maximum of seven days and it is light and not heavy. Basically, we have two main categories of dysmenorrhea or painful menses. We have primary dysmenorrhea and secondary dysmenorrhea. Primary dysmenorrhea by definition is that menses that occurring without any pelvic pathology. There is no disease and these women are very normal these young ladies are very normal they just go to their menses three days uh, less than seven days and with no problem there is no identifiable pelvic pathology in their system and majorly accompanied by nausea sometimes vomiting sometimes bloating and sometimes headache basically physiological process occurring in primary dysmenorrhea is that there is increased prostaglandin levels which normally causes uterine contraction and then a woman experiences systemic symptoms like diarrhea, headache, nausea, vomiting and fatigue. When uterus is contracting, oxygen supply to the tissue surrounding the ut uterus is cut and therefore resulting into pain and that is the cause of primary dysmenorrhea is there's a physiological process with no pathology with no disease secondary dysmenorrhea this is now due to pelvic pathology and they range from endometriosis adenomyosis uterine fibroid intrauterine devices that is iucd pelvic inflammatory diseases and vaginal or pelvic anomalies that is congenital uh, somebody is born with abnormal vagina or abnormal uterus and these ones we are going to discuss them case by case in terms of presentation, clinical signs and symptoms, and the way they can be managed. Stay tuned. In endometriosis, tissues that grows in the uterine lining, that is endometrium, grows outside the endometrium. And it can grow in the ovaries, in the fallopian tubes, and other parts of the body. And really, does it go outside the body? And this is number one, number one cause of infertility. And it must be investigated thoroughly. Patient will normally present with low abdominal pain, irregular menses, heavy bleeding, spotting, and also nausea, vomiting, headache, lower back pain. In adenomyosis, the uterine tissues exist in and grows into the uterine wall. And this normally occur within childbearing age and disappears after menopause. Of course, there will be heavy bleeding, there will be regular menses, there will be cramps during menstruation, 
and there will be backache, nausea, vomiting, spotting in a woman experiencing the signs and symptoms of adenomyosis. A woman can also have painful menses due to uterine fibroids. These are non-cancerous growth. They are not cancer. Not that uterine fibroids are not cancer. And they can grow very big and you might even think that a woman is pregnant. But only if you are doing your pelvic ultrasound, you will get that it's carrying a very huge uterine fibroid. And normally it occurs during childbearing age. It will cause too much pain in this particular woman. She will have discomfort during coitus, will have irregular menses, sometimes heavy bleeding and spotting. Pelvic inflammatory disease affects women of childbearing age, especially those who are very, very active in coitus, those who are sexually active and normally practice sex without protection, without use of condom and porn to get PID, which is majorly caused by two organisms, that is gonorrhea, Neisseria gonorrhea or chlamydia, trichomatis. Now, this is a systemic signs and symptom. Of course, a woman can have a bad odor, a low abdominal pain, discharge, uh, vaginal discharge. Also, can have backache, low back ache, headache, nausea, and vomiting. This one can be investigated by doing vaginal swabs or urinalysis to detect any presence of pus cells to enable us to treat. Intrauterine contraceptive devices, that, that is IUCD, normally help to prevent pregnancy and they are inserted into the uterus with sterile procedure. Of course, we have two types, that is hormonal and non-hormonal. And normally non-hormonal causes or have high risk of, cre uh, of resulting into dysmenorrhea like Property. Hormonal ones are very, very important because they normally reduce chances of heavy bleeding and even stop menstruation. And for example, we have the Mirena, Skaya, and Lileta. Women born with congenital anomalies of the uterus and vagina can have problems during menstruation and this can cause secondary dysmenorrhea as shown below. So if you are born with pelvic anomaly or pelvic uh, problems and it is congenital, it might lead to menses collecting into your uterine or pelvic cavity resulting in very, very severe pain. And this one should be investigated by doing pelvic ultrasound. And this should be corrected as soon as possible to avoid this in old age or in childbearing age. No laboratory investigation is specific to dysmenorrhea. And this one, we normally send patient to the lab case by case. Of course, we will do full blood count. We check on the lymphocytes, we check on white blood cells, and also we check on platelet levels. Also, we'll send the patient for ESR, just to check for any inflammatory pathology that is going on. Of course, we will send the patient also to do urinalysis to check also where there are proteins, where there are uh, bilirubins, where there are leukocytes, or where there are deposits or too much epithelial cells into the urine. Patient presenting with vaginal discharge, of course, will do high vaginal swabs for culture and sensitivity and this one will help us in the drug of choice in managing this particular disease and also we are also interested whether uh, the result will come out as Neisseria gonorrhea positive or Chlamydia trichomatis positive or any other anaerobes or bacteria uh, that might be present into the vaginal swab. In management of primary dysmenorrhea Basically, we say there's no pelvic pathology. We want to prevent this pain. So we will use non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs like brufen, diclofenac, selecosib, mephenamic acid, and this one will help to, uh, to relieve the pain. Also, 
will have to regulate these menses by providing combined oral contraceptives that are widely available in our clinics and in our hospitals. In management of secondary dysmenorrhea is case by case. Of course, we must send a patient for pelvic ultrasound or abdominal ultrasound. Also, we can do laparoscopic examination and of course, general management can be partial hysterectomy or total hysterectomy, that is partial removal of uterus or total removal of uterus or sometimes we can do dilatation and curettage. sometimes we can use laser. In endometriosis, we relieve pain by NSAID, of course we can use combined oral contraceptives or hormonal therapies like production of estrogen to our patients and do cuterization, we can do ablation using lasers or electrocoagulation and endometrial ablation. In adenomyosis, we can use hormonal therapy and give aromatase inhibitors and also give NSAIDs and steroid or anti-inflammatory drug and of course we can do the last resort of hysterectomy either partial or total. In uterine fibroids uh, we can also insert uh, progesting devices that control hormones that normally shrinks the fibroids and also do myomectomy that is the removal of the fibroid surgically. Of course in PID we will prescribe antibiotic according to the course from the laboratory investigations. Of course we have home remedies that can help us to reduce pain before we see a doctor, clinical officer or a gynecologist. Use hot water bath and number two you have to place a heating pad or hot water bottle at the lower back or abdomen. You should be able to avoid coffee and also avoid smoking or alcohol. And of course, somebody should be able to massage your lower back or abdomen. You can also use bananas, lemon, ginger tea, broccoli, and oats. These are well investigated and research has been shown that they normally reduce pain during menstruation, the so-called dysmenorrhea. If you have not subscribed to this channel, please hit the notification bell for more videos that I will post and thank you for watching.